everyone <clears throat> so today I'm going to be showing you guys the different steps and techniques for making our art deco stained glass piece it's not really stained glass and talking a little bit about the composition and sort of my thought process for how I went about laying everything out so let me take my Duralar off uh, but this is the Duralar it's that kind of or to see through plasticky piece of paper in your kit and you can buy it in like a big pack just like a sheet of paper um, it comes more like watercolor paper or like a sketch pad in packs of like 20 25 and it's really nice because it's heavier duty than tracing paper so it's not as flimsy and when you draw on it uh, you'll see that if you draw on the front side it's gonna look pretty much like a regular drawing, but if you draw on the back side, it will be a little more opaque. So it'll have sort of a, a stained glass effect and you could hold it up to light and see through it. So let's take a look at my composition and let me see if I can at least show you guys the whole thing. We might not be able to see all of it just because uh, my camera isn't high up enough, but you should be able to get a pretty good sense of what's going on in this piece. So I took a heavy piece of paper. I took like a Bristol board, which is a little bit thicker. If you don't have Bristol board, you can just use a piece of plain white copy paper, really anything because what I did was I drew out my design with pencil. So this took a long time and this is going to be copied onto my Duralar. But rather than drawing on the Duralar and erasing a lot, I wanted to put the Duralar over my image and actually trace onto the Duralar itself. So this is an extra step, but it's gonna give you a much more refined image because I'm going to go over this drawing in pen on the Duralar. So let's talk a little bit about my composition. I was really interested in uh, playing cards and a couple of years ago I was in the show called The Deck Show where I was responsible for recreating my own version of the Two of Hearts and so I got interested in the history of cards and so this is a six of, can't see it here, a six of cups or the six of hearts. So the six of hearts is kind of the newer version of the older suites, which is uh, cups. So I was interested in the symbolism and I thought that could be really cool to make an Art Nouveau drawing of. So the Art Nouveau styles that I used were kind of the woman with very bohemian flowing dress. She's got you know, jewelry on that's really traditional kind of boho dress for turn of the century or late 19th century. I used a lot of different patterns, especially around the sort of border of this piece. Yours definitely does not have to be this elaborate, but I wanted mine to be like almost like a stained glass piece where every surface was considered. It does have a little bit of depth and I may get rid of that going forward because most Art Nouveau pieces are fairly flat in the background, but the traditional meaning of this card or the symbolism of this card would be children playing in a garden. And so I wanted to have the sense of that garden. The background, you didn't really get that with all the water and the fountain. So the background might change. But the composition strategies that I used, of course, were pattern, so repeating pattern, and there's a different pattern in each section. So this section is cattails, and I think I need to add some more to this. Uh, then we've got like the leaves of some sort of water plant and then irises at the top. So there's a lot of pattern in and around this. And it's kind of a random pattern because not everything is all going in the same direction. So I didn't want anything to be too uniform because I just would have taken even longer to draw. Then I have this somewhat balanced composition because I do have two elements over here that kind of balance out 
the element here. It's all very vertical. So the way that she is sitting and the way that she is sitting are somewhat vertical. So the whole thing reads in kind of an up and down uh, motion. And then I wanted to use the element of contrast or the principle of contrast, I'm sorry. So she is a young girl and her clothes are contrasted to her. She looks older, more mature. She's in a very traditional child's dress for the Victorian era, whereas she's in this much more like boho, kind of more adult. So the two of them are looking at each other. So there's a sense of uh, interaction between the two of them. And then I used a lot of diagonal lines. So there's a diagonal here and there's a diagonal here. So diagonals tend to create more visual interest in a piece. And when I color all of this in, her dress is going to be red. And there will be some other warm tones, like the cattails are going to be a reddish brown. And then the um, lotus flowers will be like a pinkish red but I want her dress to be the focal point so her dress is really going to pop. So I'm using color as a focal point but I'm also using a little bit of hierarchical scale. She's actually the biggest thing in here other than this fountain but this fountain's covered up so you don't see it as much because her dress goes all the way down to here and her, the top of her head is here. So she is taking up more space in the composition and she's also higher and so she has a sense of hierarchy over this figure who's down here. So she's going to serve as the focal point for this piece and you could use something other than color. You could use texture, you could use um, subject matter, really any way you want to, but color is a really easy way to create a focal point and we tend to notice it first. So uh, I'm going to use color to put, um, to draw her dress as red and have her serve as that focal point. So my next step is going to be to tape down my Duralar. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape the Duralar down and then I'm going to go over everything with black pen and I have a micron pen. So that's what I'm going to be using. If you don't have a micron and the only thing you might have is let's say a sharpie, you could use that as well. You could use a ballpoint pen, but uh, unless it's black, even if it's black, it may not give you the kind of depth of color or the depth of value that you're going to get from using a micron pen. So my recommendation would be that you use the micron. And I might have to lift my tape up towards the end because I don't have a border. And then I'm going to use my micron pens. So now that I have this taped down, I'm ready to start using my pens and tracing this design onto my Duralar. So you can see that I can see the design pretty well through the Duralar, so it shouldn't be a problem to trace. And I have a set of different sized microns. I have some larger ones for areas where I want to add more shading a little faster and then I have finer ones which I'll probably use for areas like the folds in the dress that I want to be thinner. So I'm going to start out with probably a smaller micron just because I would rather have my marks be a little too small and find that I need to thicken everything up than the other way around. So I'm probably going to start with this 05. So the more zeros that are in front of the number, the smaller the tip is. So an 005 is going to be a really small uh, tip. And something like an 08 or a 1 is going to be pretty large. So I'm going to start with this 05 and uh, probably start in some areas where I want there to be a wider mark just in case it's a little too big and I need to go in with a smaller micron. And then I have a paper towel. So this Duralar uh, will 
allow the ink to dry and it won't smudge once it's dry, but while it's wet, which takes a little while, it can smudge. So I'm going to just make sure that I have this piece of paper towel under my hand. You can put a piece of paper under your hand, a piece of fabric, but I want to make sure that if I do any pen work underneath, I'm not smudging and also that I'm just not getting a lot of like oil for my hands. I have oily skin, so I will transfer a lot of oil to this if I don't have something underneath my hand and that can mar the surface. So because I'm right-handed, I'm going to start in the upper left corner and try to just work my way down. And since this is pretty well drawn out, I might make some minor adjustments. I feel pretty comfortable starting in that corner and then working uh, to the bottom of my piece. And when you're working on Duralar with the pens, you're gonna find that you do get a little bit of uh, I'm not sure what the word is. It's gonna look like the pen doesn't want to sit on the surface. So you might have to go over some areas twice. And notice how, if you can see it's a little blurry, that number, the number six, is backwards because I'm actually drawing on the back side of this. So I'm going to do all my pen and then I'm gonna do all of my uh, colored pencil on the back side. So then when I flip it over, I'll be seeing the reverse image of it. So if you have any numbers or any text, you're going to need to write them backwards or you could write them really lightly on the front and then trace over them on the back. So whichever way works for you. Since I only had one number, I felt like I could just write it backwards. Okay, so I have let my pen dry for a couple of hours and now you can see that I've actually started in down at the bottom with a colored pencil. So this is the last step before I take this off and flip it over. And as you can see, it's going to look a lot lighter when you see it through the front side as opposed to through the back side. So you can go pretty dark and bold with your colored pencils. And it actually looks a little bit lighter when I'm looking at it right here than it does on this piece of the Duralar. So now I'm just going to show you guys how to use a colored pencil. So these are just a Dick Blick Studio pencil. They're not very expensive. This was a pretty cheap pack. Uh, you definitely could use Prismacolor if you have it, but it's not necessary. And one thing that I really like about the Duralar is the pencil blends really easily and it goes on really easily. So normally I would need to do a lot of burnishing when I'm using colored pencils and burnishing is where you go over the pencil in a circular motion. So you're basically filling in all the gaps, but I'm finding that I'm not needing to do very much of that because the application onto the dural R is so smooth. So you certainly can burnish a little bit, but you're not going to need to spend as much time going over everything and moving in those circular motions as you would if you were using colored pencil, colored pencil on paper. So I'm going to finish up coloring this and then we're going to flip it over and look at the other side. Okay, everybody, so this is the finished piece and this is actually the reverse side. I have one section up here that I didn't do because I'm not entirely sure if I will use the piece this way, which is how I would put it up against a window or a piece of glass, or if I would use it more upright. 
So the colors look pretty vibrant and the, the Duralar is a really nice surface for getting vibrant colors. But if you want to use it as a stained glass piece, you can actually put this against a window and the light will shine through it. It looks really nice. It does look similar to stained glass. Uh, and so I could, you know, frame it or tape it up to a window. Um, but it definitely looks different depending on if you're holding it up to the light or if you're holding it up against a different surface. So yours do not need to be as complex as mine. So keep that in mind. I, you know, did a really complex one because I wanted a nice finished piece. I might make some adjustments to this later. Um, but, you know, this is what your finished product is going to look like. So I hope you guys have fun with this project and I look forward to seeing your finished pieces.